We are here at Kachuma Lake and they just planted trout about four days ago. The game plan is we're gonna start by fishing for bass first and then if it does slow down, we'll catch some of those trout. But I did wanna show you this. Since the lake levels rose, they are making some brand new docks that the rentals can park and you guys can rent boats out here. There's gonna be quite the fleet and it's gonna be a brand new deck. They're gonna be all set for the derby, so it's gonna be pretty cool to see this lake really pop in this coming spring and summer. But let's fish. So here's what I'm throwing. It's a 3.8 inch saucy swimmer with a bluegill. I believe this is a one, actually it's a 3 16 ounce uh, swim jig head. Super light. A little heavier than an eighth of an ounce. Just under a quarter ounce. Let's me fish just above these branches that are now submerged. If it was heavier, it'd be a lot easier to get snagged. But the rate of fall is pretty nice too because it's a slow sink, but it's fast enough to where that tail moves in the water as it sinks. So Bob's throwing the buzz bait. I'm following up with a swim jig. Hopefully it's an effective way to find these fish. Just powering through. Huck and wind, huck and wind. Try to find these bias. This time of year, they're pretty annoyable. Was a good way to say it. Mainly thinking about spawning. There's one. Oh no. Oh, yeah, but my drag was too loose. Shoot. Wow, Edward. my drag. Oh, I had that guy. That's what you get, folks, when you don't get your drag all set. I mean, that was a good sign. He was right there, so kind of look for other structure like that. <laughs> but that's not bad. We've been fishing for 10 minutes, already got first sign of life. It's like I'm reminded, like whenever the fish are in tight, it's like the guys from boats cast to shore, but the guys from shore cast out into the lake. Yeah. As far as they can. There. Got him. I watched him eat it. Number one on the swim jig. That's a nice long guy. Not very fat, but that's a Kachuma Lake largemouth bass. Back tail's a little tore, but there you go. This water's super clear. I. I'm almost tempted to throw a walking bait. Cause that was just right in the middle of the reeds. I can get a walking bait into there. There you go. Oh, there's a buck man. Just right in that shallow stuff right there. What happened? Did I not get a good enough hook set on him? I didn't let that fish get it all the way because I like casted it in the shallows and then I kind of want to get a fast retrieve so it doesn't, you know, scrape the bottom. But it hit it right when it hit the water, basically. Little guy. Yeah. That, oh no! That's twice. I think that's what it is. Is I have no time to like let them eat it and set the hook, you know. Oh, I thought I was gonna get him. Got him. Nice, Bob. Another one. Another All right, one. we just finished bass fishing. 
We're gonna put our buckets down so it trolls a lot slower. We got our flick of sheds tied on. What we're aiming for is the big one. We just want a really big trout. Typically, you catch the bigger fish on the flick of sheds. You just have to go a little bit slower. And our odds of catching big ones, especially since they just planted for the derby, they wanted to put some really big ones in here. So, should be a good time. The water's super clear. So, I think our chances are really, really good right now. And those bass, it's not really full blown yet. We did get a good sample of them. I lost three. <laughs> I don't know, they just came unbuttoned. But I think it's because they attacked the bait so shallow I didn't really have a lot of time to let him eat it and uh, probably just didn't get good hook sets on two of them and I lost one because of a, a line failure. But Bob definitely got on him. He got like six on the Senko. So it's definitely picking up. Water temps are now in the 60s, low 60s. So by the time this video comes out, it's probably gonna be full blown. It's probably gonna be like 65 to 68 degrees by the time this is posted. So it's just gonna get better. Remember we were cooking burgers on my boat in Dillon? Oh! Whoa. He came off. Did you see him jump off? I saw him jump. Last one. On the needlefish. All right, we got our first bite on that one. Needlefish. Other two are flick of shafts. There it is. Good one, huh? Good one, Bob. On the Promar cam. First trout of the day. We actually didn't go near they planted, where they planted. Actually, we did, but we decided uh, to play a different game, go away from that. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That's a good one. Holy cow. That's a nice fish. Look at that. Since we started trolling, it's we've been trolling for about an hour now at least. Did multiple passes. Bob's theory is that since the water temp is like 63, it's kind of warm for trout. Trout kind of like it colder in the 50s, high 50s, mid 50s, low 50s. So that higher temperature of the water kind of pushes them down. So they're a little further down, but we still got one. We hooked up earlier as well, but the bites actually died down. So it's kind of sad that the derby's the week that it really warms up, but it's going to be a beautiful day out here. So. That's, you get the, the pluses and the minuses. But yeah, now that we got that one fish, our morale booster, that's what we got. All right, we're calling it on the trout. No more trout. We're gonna catch some more bass and still try to be home before Bob's wife beats him. 65 degrees, 65.7. Yep, so it's 65.7 degrees. That really puts trout not in the mood, but it should also put the bass in the mood to eat, but that's not happening either. So just casting it out, seeing if we can't get one more bass before the day's done. Bob just missed one right now. He had it on for like two seconds and then we saw a flash and it's gone. But it seemed like the morning bite was really good. They were really committing, but at the same time, not really, because I farmed three of them and only landed one. Bob landed like six. So it was a good bass morning. But 
with the lake levels the way that they are, it's just a matter of covering water and seeing how this fishery changed over the last few years, which it's changed pretty drastically. But if this is the end, we at least got one trout, few bass, it's still fun. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Net. Biggest Kachuma fish. How's your drag, Bob? Oh shoot, that's a tank. Holy Oh, on the Promar. Oh, oh my god, that's a freaking tank. Oh, oh. That's how you get it done, boys and girls. That's a monster. Oh, that's a stud. Holy Bob. Holy Bob, holy Bob, holy Bob, we need, oh my God, Bob. Oh my God, Bob. Oh my God, oh my God, Bob. What even is that? What is that, Bob? It's almost, it's... 6 point... Hasn't locked yet. Hurry, come on. Lock. I'm just gonna say 6.8. Holy crap, Bob. That's a big one. What even is that? All right, Bob. just ending the video I was ending the video and all of a sudden Bob sets the hook and it looks like he's stuck to a log but it wasn't a log it was a 6.8 largemouth bass <laughs> last minute hurrah. that was the biggest kachuma bass I have personally seen in person a decade I haven't had one that in a decade here Bob had oh my gosh Ridiculous. I casted it out next to the little bush right there. And I, I don't know what I was doing. I think I had a backlash or I was messing with the, the trolling motor. And uh, when I picked the rod, I just felt a little bit of tension. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And uh, caught the slack on it. And I could feel the fish just vibrating a little bit. And I just set the hook and I didn't think it was gonna be that big, but once I set the hook, it pulled hard, and I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's a good one. And then it started peeling drag a little bit, so I was like, oh, yeah, you might need the net on that one. But, uh, yeah, long time, no Kachuma fish like that. We don't uh, see fish like that very often, um, but we released her safely. She went probably back to her bed, so uh, last-minute heroics. It was pretty awesome. Not gonna lie, Bob has done that with, like, drop shot and, like, brought up a five-pound catfish. Or I was like, dude, is that a carp? Like, what is that? But as soon as I saw that flash in the water, <laughs> that was a nice bass, bro. Nice bass. Bro, show the world. I don't want to show the world, bro. All right. So that is my favorite springtime spawning bait right there. That has caught my PB 12 pounds, 13 ounces. And I've caught numerous fives and six pounders during the spawn on it. That's a Gary Yamamoto Senko, the color cinnamon blue flake. I mean, this one right here, I, th I throw it wacky wig rigged, uh, weedless, and I mean, it's my go-to go springtime bait every time. So, that one right there, guys.